From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. May God bless the reading of the Gospel today. Water. I'm glad they have it. <laughs> and water is a central image throughout Scripture, and therefore a recurring image in so much of our church music. In the African American spiritual, weighed in the water, many verses allude to this water that keeps recurring in Scripture. Israelites escaping Egypt through the Red Sea. Jesus healing a man who sat at the edge of a famous pool. Crowds of people always gathered around that certain pool, hoping to be healed. But the healings only happened when the pool was activated, when the water was stirred by the divine hand of God. So everyone just sat there waiting for the still water to be troubled, to be stirred up a bit. And when they saw the tiny ripples appear on the surface of the water, all of these dejected people rushed into the pool, hoping that its troubled waters would restore them to health. The abolitionist Harriet Tubman sang Wade in the Water to slaves escaping their southern oppressors. They knew those biblical stories. Water symbolizes liberation as when the people of God walked through that sea, escaping the hand of Pharaoh. Water symbolizes healing, as when Jesus told a certain man sitting by that pool to just take up his mat and walk and be well again. Escaping slaves plunged themselves into the troublesome waters down south of rivers and streams so that they could throw off the slave catcher's dogs by drowning the scent of their escape. And seizing their own liberation with both hands, they journeyed under the stars of the drinking gourd toward a new life. God has been working with water from the very beginning of time, in the beginning when darkness was over the face of the deep, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters of creation. God continues to work with water in each of our lives today. And on this Sunday, when we remember the baptism of Jesus, we are all called to wade in the waters. In our psalm today, the waters are stirred up by horrible storms, waters that nearly swallow up the community of this songwriter. In Psalm 29, we encounter an ancient song which reflects on the power of such storms. And this ancient lyricist watches a storm rolling in across the Mediterranean Sea and witnesses the full force of nature's power, earth, wind, fire, and water reveal their disorienting potential. The earthquakes, the winds snap massive cedars like so many matchsticks, lightning sets fires that burn through the wild places, and the waters reel up like a mighty wave until the storm recedes, leaving a flooded plain. And the response of the songwriter is to shout, Glory! Rather than cowering in the face of the storm, this poet perceives a theological truth revealed even in its midst. A mysterious order makes itself known in the tumult. He sees the Lord in heaven enthroned over the flood, 
The Lord sits enthroned as king forever, he proclaims. Nothing changes that, not even these storms. As he composes this song, the psalmist establishes this steady beat, repeating the name of God. What we see translated here as the Lord is Yahweh, Jehovah, the name of God. The psalmist perceives that the storm is not just senseless dissonance, but instead a triumphant witness to the power of the Creator. It's the voice of God which ordered all of creation in the beginning. The thunder's voice is still within the creation, over and above all the created world. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars. Of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to swirl and strips the forest bare. And high in heaven in the temple they shout, Glory. In the original language, that Hebrew word signifying most thunder and voice produces a seven-fold repetition. As I said before, it makes it sound like, as the Hebrew people were singing it, thunder rolls. We need that gravelly, resonant voice of good holiness preacher to reveal the full effect of this song. Though the Canaanite deity Baal is known as, in their valley, the storm rider God, this psalmist asserts that it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's Yahweh, Jehovah is his name, who actually commands the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. God creates and blesses through the power of God's voice. And so the voice of God also appears in the gospel reading for today. It's a very Matthew thing to do. Take a really important Old Testament image and bring it into the story of Jesus. That voice hovers over the waters, just as it did on the first day of creation, and Jesus wades into those waters to be baptized by John, the one crying in the wilderness who had prepared a way for him. And this marks the start of his public ministry. And as he does so, the voice in heaven resounds. This is my son, my beloved with whom I'm well pleased. I'm struck by the contrast and the consistency between these two scriptural passages about water that are given to us today. In the psalm, the water is troubled and troubling. It's an intense storm. And yet the power of the storm is still in the hands of God who created all things. And the psalmist proclaims glory. To the Almighty God, even as nature's full force is fully displayed. Now at Jesus' baptism, the clouds part, and a dove descends, and the God of all creation speaks again, that thunderous voice now saying simply, This is my beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. Beloved, that's a beautiful word. To be beloved is to be cherished, honored, treasured, adored. In his baptism, Jesus is claimed by God as the beloved son. To be beloved is also the promise of our own baptism. Through baptism, God claims us as God's very own, God's beloved children. Through baptism, we're received into the loving embrace of the very God the psalmist tells us can speak over and through the most raging storm we've ever experienced. The Holy One whose voice separated light from darkness and land from water. The Almighty God who brought order to the chaotic waters of the formless void. It's Yahweh, Jehovah, who receives us 
each and every one of us, as beloved children, we too are precious and treasured and adored. But that's not the story we usually tell ourselves, is it? Most of us have a little voice in our heads, a little voice that continually reminds us of our weaknesses and our mistakes, a voice that tells us we're not good enough and insinuates that people only pretend to like us, a little voice that tells us the storms are too big and too dangerous and we will never survive them, a voice that whispers, you're not actually interesting enough or attractive enough, or intelligent enough to be beloved. And you're simply too weak to survive storms. Which voice are we to believe? The one who claims us as beloved children of God, or the one that whispers cynically, never, never, never enough? Sometimes the interior voice is joined by exterior voices of rejection or ridicule, and we fight to hold on to the sound of God's thunderous voice speaking, Beloved, beloved child of God, you're mine. Jesus knew all about ridicule and rejection. Do you remember when he quoted the Psalms asking the crowds, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it's marvelous in our eyes. A Lutheran church in Minneapolis created a marvelous work of art in their entryway, which gathered these images of water and stones into a celebration of baptism's true meaning. They created an interactive baptismal font. The pastor thought this was going to be a small fountain that people could splash their fingers in and reconnect with the waters of baptism. But that's not what the artistic team who took the idea and ran with it decided to do. The first Wednesday evening in Lent, the congregation came to their midweek worship time and they discovered there in the entryway a huge 10 foot by 10 foot box with two and a half feet high cement walls with three galvanized pipes sticking up about five feet from the bottom. It wasn't the cute little Pinterest project they anticipated. <laughs> Around the foyer, there were chunks or pieces of limestone on pallets left over from landscaping jobs because they weren't the right size or they weren't the right color or they weren't the right shape for the people who had their own ideas for what they wanted to build. Stacked on those pallets was a great testimony of rejected stones that had been tossed aside. And each one had a hole drilled through the middle of it. The parishioners filled the sanctuary and not sure what to make of the construction mess they were walking past. They started the season of Lent. Following the worship service and a moving sermon about what God can do with rejected stones, the community was then instructed to line up and take pieces of limestone passing each one down the line, and there by the pipes, the artist would thread a pipe through that hole that had been drilled in the middle of the stone. And the artist kept threading the pipes through the stones until each pipe was surrounded all the way up to its top with broken pieces of rejected stone. And what people hadn't realized was that those pipes were water pipes. And when they turned the water on, water started trickling over all of those stones, those joined stones, those leftover rejected stones that no one had wanted, all in their unwanted shapes and sizes and colors. And now they were bathed with running water, which reflected the light above as it cascaded over them. Remember your baptism the preacher intoned. 
The beauty of that baptismal fountain was that the stones didn't remain scattered, rejected, and isolated. Instead, they all came together. Too often when we feel rejected because of an imperfection, we just want to hide ourselves from the crowds. And community is not our first instinct. But when God troubles the water, God calls the people together to be a part of something big and beautiful. God's voice thunders over the power of the storm to destroy and calls to God's children, wade in the water. Water is freedom. Water is healing. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, we are living stones in the building of God's kingdom on earth. God's full power, shown to us in the waters of baptism, bathes us in love. We come together and worship each week because we need to hear that promise over and over again to drown out that whispery voice in our heads. We need to know that God is with us and has claimed us. Sometimes life is just so hard and we feel empty and tired. But when we gather with other rejected stones, sometimes the community sings for us those shouts of glory that we haven't been able to muster ourselves through the week. And sometimes the community prays for us the prayers we haven't had the will to pray in the days since we last saw each other. And so because we come together, because we wade into the water of God's redeeming love together, Renewing power washes over us, reminding us that in the waters of baptism, we never stand alone. In the face of the loudest storms and the strongest winds and even the quaking earth, we can shout glory. What's been troubling the waters for you lately? Remember your baptism and wait on me. Amen. Wash O God, your sons and daughters, number 365, and all are invited to share in this feast, where none are rejected, all are received. Will you prepare with us? 